Thanks, Ray. Um, as you can see on the screen, these are our objectives, objectives for today. We're gonna learn under the proper personnel protective equipment. We're also gonna learn about proper procedure for checking in employees' temperatures to include the tympanic thermometer, the temporal artery thermometer, and the infrared thermometer. Gonna learn how to recognize a fever and know what to do if symptoms arise know how to identify an employee's potential exposure to COVID-19, and also abide by CDC guidelines to reduce COVID-19 transmission among employees. Preparing to take temperatures, most important thing always is wash your hands with soap and water for at least minimum of 20 seconds. This is based on CDC recommendations also. Also have hand sanitizer with you to use as needed. It needs to be at least 65% alcohol based. What to wear. If you have a mask, preferably the N95, you can wear that, um, but it's not necessary. Also, if you have a gown, that's that can be worn also, but it's not necessary. Gloves are very important and you need to change them each time you touch an individual. You do not want to cross contaminate. I know some pro people probably seen them wearing out in public, but anytime you touch something, you really need to change it before you move on to the next individual. Eye protection, preferably a face shield that covers the front and sides of your face. After performing a temperature check, you need to clean the thermometer after each use with alcohol or soap and water, but of course read your manufacturer's instructions that, are, that come with your particular thermometer. If you're using the tympanic thermometer, you're gonna to need to change that tip each time. Um, Amy, I think we also said here something about facial hair and using the N95 masks or, or respirators. Yes, yes. Um, um, guys with beards, um, based on CDC recommendations also, they prefer that you do not have one because you don't get a good seal. Plus, I'm sure you've heard in the news and stuff that beards are very um, germy, so to speak. So preferably you keep it kind of cliche um, and so that you have a good seal with your mask and everything else. And plus you're not, you know, passing on germs to the next individual. Okay. The first thermometer that we're going to talk about is a tympanic thermometer. It is a digital thermometer specifically designed to fit into the ear canal. It reads your temperature based on heat emissions from the eardrum. It's appropriate for use with children, adults, and infants older than six months. How do you use it? First of all, you need to ensure that ear canal is dry. Also, you're gonna position the sterile cover on the tip of the thermometer to protect the inside of the ear. Just remember to change that tip between each individual. Insert the thermometer into the ear, activate it, and wait until the temperature is displayed on the digital screen. The temperature results, the average normal oral temperature is 98.6, but please keep in mind that varies among individuals. Some people have a lower body temperature than others and some may have a higher one. The ear temperature is typically about one degree Fahrenheit higher than your oral temperature. Normal tympanic temperature is read at 99.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Fever reading is 104 point, I'm sorry, 101.4 degrees Fahrenheit. However, the CD, CDC is recommending that fever begins at 104 degrees Fahrenheit, and they don't um, distinguish between which thermometer you're using. There's also some hospitals, at least here in the Memphis area where I'm at, they're actually sending individuals back home if their temperature is 99 degrees. So just kind of keep that in mind. It's gonna be based on your client and your needs. Okay. All right, the next one is the temporal artery thermometer. It is also a digital thermometer that's designed for non-invasive assessment. It's also referred to as a forehead thermometer. It re reads your temperature based on heat emitted from the temporal artery that runs across your forehead. Um, because it's gentle, um, it's appropriate for all ages. Um, how to use it? The person must have their forehead 
forehead clear from hair, hat, etc. Also be sure they're not sweaty or anything like that. And also, of course, clean the probe before each use. You're going to place that probe on the center of the forehead and depress the button. You keep the button to press as you slide it straight across the forehead. You don't need, need to curve it any, it just goes straight across the forehead. Keep um, the button to press and you're gonna actually lift that probe up and place it just behind the ear. It's called the soft spot where a lot of people put perfume. Stop pressing the button and read the temperature displayed on the digital screen. <clears throat> Again, the average normal oral temperature is 98.6. The temporal artery temperature is 0.8 degrees higher than an oral temperature. So the normal temporal artery temperature is 99.4. With these thermometers, they say fever is at 101.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, CDC is saying 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit is considered a fever. The infrared thermometer, this one is not as common to be used in um, medical facilities. Um, it is a digital thermometer that does not require physical contact with the patient, making it um, useful during epidemics. You can maintain that safe distance of about six feet because you're just going to point that thermometer at the patient's forehead. It reads the temperature, though, based on thermal radiation from the subject. Um, it's appropriate for use with all ages. Again, you point it directly to the patient's forehead without making contact, and then you wait a few seconds for the reading to appear. Um, like I said, most hospitals, they are not relying on this one because it's not as reliable. They're using the tympanic or the temporal artery thermometers. Um, the infrared temperature reads at 3.6 degrees lower than an oral temperature, so that normal temperature is 95 degrees. It considers a fever at a reading of 96.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Interpreting the um, body temperature readings. Um, like we've already said, the normal body temperature ranges from 97 degrees Fahrenheit to 99 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, it's, you know, varies among each individual. The higher body temperature is considered a fever when it reaches 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. That's, again, based on CDC recommendations. Of course, you want to see the normal under each device that we've talked about. What do you do if somebody... Um, has a fever, first you just wanna make sure that they haven't had hot coffee or come in from a walk. If that happens, you wanna let them sit for um, about 30 minutes and then recheck that temperature. If it is still elevated, do not allow them to return to work. It is recommended that employees who have symptoms of acute respiratory illness do not come to work until their body temperature is consistently below 100.4 100 degrees Fahrenheit without fever reducing medicines. Also, it's important to note that some people do not have a fever at all, but may only have loss of smell and taste. We're gonna talk about some of those in just a second. Another useful tool to identify potential exposure are these screening questions. These are just a couple that um, we have compiled after talking with some of the hospital facilities. First question you can ask is, have you or someone in close contact with you traveled outside of the United States within the last 14 days? Or have they been ill since traveling outside of the United States within 14 days? Close contact is described as somebody that you're within six feet of somebody, of another person. So that means, you know, somebody you're living with, you're taking care of, you share a room with, you share a space with. If you have experienced the following symptoms, loss of sense, sense of taste or smell, cough, fever, shortness of breath, sore throat. If they answer yes to any of those questions, they may be at risk for the COVID-19. to reduce the transmission among employees, actively encourage sick employees to stay home. 
you can recommend to your employees to check their temperature each morning after they wake up to make sure they're not running a fever before they actually get to work. Employees who have symptoms such as fever, cough, or shortness of breath should notify their supervisor of their condition and should not go to work. Sick employees should follow the CDC recommended steps to prevent further spread of COVID-19. Those, step, those steps include staying home except to get medical care, self-isolate from others within your home, wash your hands frequently, of course, and avoid sharing household items. Also highly recommend that um, frequently touched services should be cleaned as often as possible. <clears throat> Employees should not return to work until they meet the criteria for discontinuation of home isolation, for which they should consult their health care provider and state or local health departments. The CDC recommends they can discontinue home isolation if three days have passed since resolution of fever without use of fever reducing medications and improvement in respiratory symptoms, and it has been at least seven days um, since symptoms first appeared. Employees who are well but have an effective family member with whom they live should notify their supervisor and follow the CDC recommended precautions. On this, um, within our PowerPoint, we listed our resources that we use to compile all this information. So it's available for you if you wanna read up on your own about the CDC recommendations. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we also uh, just wanna say, I think, uh, Following uh, today's training class, you will receive a copy of the recording, a copy of the PowerPoint presentation. And if you saw in the PowerPoint presentation, there are hyperlinks within there to show you how to use the individual thermometers, as well as uh, some hyperlinks to the references that Amy was talking about on, on various slides. Amy, we had a couple questions that came through. Okay. The, first, the first question was, what are your thoughts about checking individuals who have traveled domestically, specifically from New York, New Jersey, or other hot COVID-19 areas? I would treat those just like they have traveled outside of the country, including um, individuals that have traveled to California. Washington State was another hot spot. Um, any travel that they've done domestically, they, especially if it was a high or a hot spot, they probably need to self-isolate for 14 days. Florida's okay. probably the same way. I think there's a question that came in about that. What about Florida? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think we talked about this earlier, Amy, and you may have gone through it, but um, how, um, how often in the workplace uh, would, would it be recommended to take the temperature? Like, and, and are there, you know, any restrictions that employees should note prior to taking a temperature? Like you did. Go ahead. The best time to take the temperature is what we're seeing across, kind of across the country of employers that are doing this. They're taking the temperature upon re arrival to work or with the hospitals, they're taking the temperature upon before they can enter. So that's what I would recommend, especially if you have um, employees that work in factories that are up and moving all the time during out their shift. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to check it before they leave unless you have them rest for about 30 minutes before they go home and check it in. Um, again, you need to be aware of if they're drinking hot coffee, even though you're not doing an oral temperature, if you drink a hot beverage, that is gonna raise your body temperature. So you're gonna have to wait at least 30 minutes um, before you can get an accurate reading on their temperature. Okay. I would also encourage um, individuals, especially if they're an essential employee and they have to go into work, they may just want to get in the habit of checking their temperature every single morning, you know, before they head in. And then, of course, if you're doing it before they start their shift, that's just another 
step to help identify anybody that may be potentially exposed. Um, do you recommend any particular type of environment to take the temperature in? Like, can you, can you take it while they're coming in the door outside or, you know, do you recommend like a cool break room? What, what are your thoughts about that? Um, well, it depends on if you can isolate an area that keeps them separate from everybody else within the building. As long as they're not in the hot Florida sun and walking, you know, 15 minutes to get to the entrance of the building, you may want to just, you know, let them rest just for a few minutes. Um, that's going to be a judgment call depending on your area. Mm -hmm. Of course, you don't want them hot and sweaty because, again, that's going to raise their body temperature. So if you can isolate a room, the building as soon as they come in the front door and um, that you can keep uh, clean and sanitized and limit it to only one or two people in there at a time, then that's probably the best idea. What if the employee um, goes off site for lunch? Do you recommend they, taking their temperature once they return? Well, if it's like Tennessee, then the only thing they're going to be in is their car. They should not have any interaction with anybody else, but that probably would not be a bad idea. If they leave the, uh, the building for any reason and they come back, I would probably recheck their temperature. Okay. You mentioned hot drinks may affect the, the temperature like coffee. Do cold drinks have an effect yes. on the temperature as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. I think coffee was the main thing everybody thinks mm -hmm. of first thing in the morning. Me, on the other hand, I drink water all day long, so I would have to wait at least 30 minutes. It's, it's probably a, a good guideline if they have eaten or drink anything within 30 minutes of getting their temperature taken, then you need to allow that time for it to kind of get out of their system. And I, I see somebody said, can temperature testing be done in all states? As far as I know, I haven't seen anything coming out saying that you cannot do it. Um, it's not violating HIPAA practices um, as far as I know, because you're not giving out personal, you know, information to anybody else. It's just for your own process. Okay. And, and, uh, and Sparity is definitely uh, here to help with those questions as well. And we, yes. we will definitely loop in your HR specialist to make sure that uh, you've got a, a comprehensive answer in there. Um, there were a couple questions in there. Uh, there was a question, what, what, are you, what in your opinion are best practices to avoid violating HIPAA practice when scanning staff temperatures? Is there, uh, I mean, are you, do, do you keep a log or do you, do you just scan a temperature and, and as long as you haven't noticed any of those CDC guideline risk factors that, you know, you, you move on to the next person? How, what, what do you think about? I honestly have not heard of anybody keeping a log of it. Okay. Um, now I know individuals that are doing it at home um, on their own, they do recommend keeping a log every single day. But as mm -hmm. far as businesses, no, I haven't heard anything about keeping log. I don't really see a reason, reason for it. Okay. Um, but that's something that you may want to discuss with your own HR type of people. Okay. Are, are you, uh, just to keep the privacy up, uh, as people are coming in, if you have a large group of people, are you doing this in a separate room, a private room, where if if something, uh, if, if you were to notice something, you could you could just have a private conversation right. with that person. Okay. Yeah, that that me personally, that would probably be the best idea is to have a, an area set up. It's probably going to cause a backup of people coming into the building but at least it would be more secure, easier to kind of control the environment, that type of thing. And if you do identify somebody, you're able to keep that person away from everybody else. Um, because once you do identify somebody with a fever, you have to stop right then and deal with, with that individual. So you got to keep them isolated from everybody else because you don't want to infect the 20 people that may be behind them or anything like that. So even if they are lined up, remember um, the social distancing of six feet at least, 
So I know a lot of businesses are placing like tape on the ground to kind of mark out, you know, six feet between each individual, um, encourage them to wash their hands as soon as they get through the door before they go on to the next place, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's, I don't want to say it's common sense because I think we've kind of gotten away from a lot of it, but it is, I mean, it's, you know, just routine hygiene, you know, you want to keep your hands clean, keep hand sanitizer on you, stay away from other individuals. Hope that makes it. <laughs> right, right. It does. It does. Uh, looking for additional questions in the uh, chat area. Um, just give uh, maybe a couple more seconds here. I would like to remind everyone this session, including the questions, have been recorded today, so you will get a copy of the recording as well as a copy of the PowerPoint presentation and uh, any other handouts that we may have. So I will put it out there. <coughs> Sorry, I just took a drink of water. I think it went down the wrong way. <coughs> I promise I don't have the virus. <laughs> well, we're on the Zoom meeting, we are we, we have a good distance. Um, That's right. Are there any other meds or medical conditions that could affect temperature? Um, if you're taking ibuprofen or Tylenol for pain, like you hurt your shoulder or something like that, then yes. <clears throat> that will, you know, reduce your fever. And that's not the reason why you're taking it, if that makes sense too. <clears throat> Excuse me. But as far as other medications, you may want to check with your healthcare provider. Good point. Oh, um, cough suppressants, cold cough su um, medicines, a lot of those do have acetaminophen or, you know, ibuprofen type medication in it too, so be careful with those. <clears throat> you don't want to mask your symptoms. Okay, um, I don't see any, whoop. Oh. Um, okay, so a, a question came in from one of our safety consultants who probably has a, as good an answer as anyone on this. So James, I'm going to unmute you. Uh, the question came wow. in is if you need to be fit tested for a respirator. And um, I, I think the, the normal answer for that is is you do need to go through some sort of fit testing but uh james uh i've unmuted you do you want to give an answer to that because i think you have a good answer to that oh. james are you un <coughs> unmuted go ahead james do you have can you hear uh, me now Ray? yes Okay, yeah, um, under normal circumstances, when it comes to respiratory protection, um, if respiratory protection is, is specified to be used on a mandatory base by the employer, then there's a situation where um, fit testing is required per governmental regulatory compliance standards. However, with the situation that we're in with COVID-19, um, I think it's more important that people uh, care for respirators uh, handle, put them on, take them off correctly, not have facial hair. I think that's much more important than worrying about uh, regulatory compliance right now. If, if there's a means for fit testing, absolutely, uh, to assure that, uh, you know, the uh, respirator is being properly selected as well as properly put on. Uh, that's the whole purpose for a fit test. However, um, if there is no means for fit testing, but you have respiratory protection available under these circumstances, uh, personally, I recommend that people uh, people use them as, as much as possible. Thank you, James. Okay, um, I don't see additional questions coming through right now. So if you, if you have any additional questions, please feel free to email our safety department at safety at insperity.com. We will get those questions over to Amy, make sure they get answered. And we'll follow up today uh, with an email to uh, everyone who um, was invited to this class. We'll just uh, respond to all and put everybody's name in the um, uh, kind of the BCC area just to maintain a level of privacy. 
Um, but thank you all for attending this class today. Amy, thank you very much. Great job. Uh, we, we appreciate you.